In an alternate universe, Anakin Skywalker left the Jedi Order after marrying Padme Amidala. Shortly after their wedding, Anakin and Padme sat down in their cozy lakeside retreat on Naboo, basking in the serenity of their new life together. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting a golden glow over the shimmering waters of the lake, while the soft sounds of nature filled the air. Inside, however, there was a rare moment of tranquility. Anakin took a deep breath, his gaze fixed on Padme, his heart full. Padme, I've never been this happy, he began, his voice tinged with both relief and wonder. Ever since I joined the Order, I've always felt like an outcast. Everyone was scared of my potential, always watching me, judging me. But when I'm with you, none of that matters. It's like the weight of the galaxy is lifted from my shoulders. Padme listened intently, her hand gently squeezing his. She could see the sincerity and the deep sense of liberation in his eyes. Anakin, are you sure about this? Leaving the Order is a monumental decision. You've worked so hard to become a Jedi. Maybe you should take some time to think about it. Anakin shook his head, a rare certainty in his expression. I've never been more certain of anything in my entire existence. The Jedi Order was a part of my life, but it was never my entire life. I don't want to live in secret anymore. I want to live in peace and happiness with you. I want us to build a future together, out in the open without fear. Padme could see the resolve in his eyes, and it both comforted and worried her. She knew how deeply Anakin felt things, how his passions could drive him to the ends of the galaxy. Yet, she also knew that this decision was not made lightly. She leaned in closer, her forehead resting against his. Then we'll face the future together, whatever it may hold. Just promise me, we'll take it one step at a time. Anakin smiled, a weight truly lifted from his shoulders. A few days after Anakin and Padme settled into their new life on Naboo, Anakin arranged to meet Obi-Wan Kenobi at the secluded meadow, where he and Padme often sought solace. The meadow was a place of peace and natural beauty, far from the bustling city of Thede and hidden away from prying eyes. Anakin stood at the edge of the meadow, his eyes scanning the horizon as he waited. The sun cast a warm, golden light over the swaying grasses and wildflowers. He felt a mix of anticipation and anxiety, knowing the conversation ahead would be difficult. Soon, he saw a familiar figure approaching, his robes billowing gently in the breeze. Anakin, you sound an urgent in your message. Is everything all right? Anakin nodded, though his expression was serious. Yes, Master. Or rather, I hope it will be. There's something important I need to tell you. What is it? You could tell me anything. I have decided to leave the Order, Obi-Wan. I have married Padme, and we're starting a new life together here, on Naboo. For a moment, there was only silence. Obi-Wan's eyes widened in shock, and he looked as though he was struggling to find the right words. Anakin, I don't know what to say. You've always been unique, but this is unprecedented. I know it's a lot to take in, but I've never been more certain of anything. The Order felt like a cage. They were always afraid of my potential, always trying to control it. With Padme, I feel free. I feel whole. Obi-Wan's expression softened, and he placed a hand on Anakin's shoulder. You know I care for you deeply. You've always been like a brother to me. This path you've chosen, it's not what I would have expected, but I understand why you felt you needed to make this choice. Anakin met Obi-Wan's gaze, relief washing over him at his former master's understanding. Thank you, Obi-Wan. That means more to me than you know. <sighs> I worry about what this will mean for you. The Council won't be pleased. But more than that, I worry about the future. I understand the risk, but I believe in the path I'm taking. I believe in Padme, and I believe in myself. Then I will support you, Anakin. As best as I can, but promise me, if you ever need help, if you ever feel lost, you'll come to me, no matter what. I promise. Thank you for understanding. 
As they parted, Obi-Wan hesitated, then turned back to Anakin, his expression thoughtful. You know, I almost made the same choice years ago. What do you mean? Obi-Wan's eyes softened with a mix of nostalgia and sadness. Her name was Satine. She was the Duchess of Mandalore. We shared a connection, a deep bond. There was times I considered leaving the Order for her, just as you have for Padme. You've never told me about this. It wasn't something I spoke of often. In the end, I chose to stay with the Order. But there were moments when I wondered what might have been. Now that I understand the weight of your decision more than you realize. Anakin felt a deeper bond with Obi-Wan in that moment, recognizing the shared struggles they had both faced. As Anakin watched Obi-Wan walk away, he felt a renewed sense of purpose. With Padme by his side and Obi-Wan's understanding, he was ready to face whatever the future held. In the dimly lit chamber of the Jedi Council, the air was thick with tension. The holographic forms of several Jedi Masters flickered to life, joining the present members for an urgent meeting. Obi-Wan Kenobi stood in the center, his expression grave as he relayed the news of Anakin Skywalker's departure from the Order. Anakin has left the Jedi Order. He has married Padme Amandala and is starting a new life on Naboo. A murmur of shock and disbelief rippled through the council. Mace Windu leaned forward, his brow furrowed deeply. This is highly irregular, Obi-Wan. Anakin's potential was always a concern. Without the guidance of the Order, his power could become uncontrollable, even dangerous. I share your concerns, Master Windu. Anakin's power is immense and his emotions run deep, but I believe he has found a sense of peace and purpose with Padme. For the first time, he seems truly happy. Ki-Adi Mundi's hologram flickered as he spoke. Happiness is fleeting, Obi-Wan. The dark side preys on such emotions. If Anakin's happiness turns to fear or anger, he could become a threat not only to himself, but to the galaxy. Obi-Wan looked to Yoda, hoping for some measure of wisdom and calm. The ancient Jedi Master's eyes were closed in deep thought, his ears twitching slightly as he processed the news. Mace Windu's voice cut through the silence, his tone firm. This is not acceptable. We cannot allow Anakin to roam free, unbound by the principles of the Jedi. We should consider bringing him back. Obi-Wan's heart sank at the suggestion, but before he could respond, Yoda opened his eyes, raising a clawed hand for silence. Hasty, we must not be. Anakin's path, uncertain it is, but trust in the Force, we must. But Master Yoda, Anakin's emotions have always been volatile. Without our guidance, he could fall to the dark side. Hmm. Possible this is, but also possible it is that balance he may find. A choice he has made. Respect his journey, we must. Guide him still, from afar, we can. Obi-Wan felt a wave of relief at Yoda's words, grateful for the calming presence of the Grand Master. I will keep in contact with Anakin, monitoring his progress. He knows he can reach out to me if he ever needs help. Trust in the Force, we must. Anakin's destiny, his own to shape, it is. Hope, the light he will follow. The council members exchanged uneasy glances, but Yoda's words carried the weight of deep wisdom and years of experience. Slowly, they began to nod in agreement, though the concern still lingered in their minds. Mace Windu leaned back, though the worry had not left his face. We will trust in the Force. But we must remain vigilant. The galaxy's future is uncertain, and Anakin's role in it even more so. As the meeting adjourned, the weight of responsibility settled heavily on Obi-Wan's shoulders. He knew that Anakin's journey was just beginning, and the path ahead would be fraught with challenges. But with the support of the Council, and the guidance of the Force, he hoped that Anakin would find the balance he so desperately sought. As the Clone Wars intensified, the galaxy plunged deeper into conflict, battles raged across countless star systems, and the Republic's need for strong leadership grew ever more urgent. Padme Amidala, now a central figure in the Senate, found herself increasingly consumed by her duties.
the war demanded her presence in countless debates, negotiations, and strategic meetings, leaving Anakin behind in their peaceful retreat on Naboo more often than either had anticipated. Anakin's days grew longer and more restless. He spent hours training, meditating, and tinkering with his droids, but a growing sense of unease gnawed at him. Watching the war unfold from afar, he couldn't shake the feeling that he should be doing more to help. Doubts began to creep in. Had leaving the Jedi Order been the right decision? As a Jedi, he could have made a significant impact on the battlefield, saving lives and fighting for the Republic's survival. But then, an opportunity arose. Padme was preparing for a crucial diplomatic mission. She was set to meet with a Separatist Senator, a rare chance for peaceful negotiations that could potentially alter the course of the war. The mission was fraught with danger, and the need for reliable security was paramount. Anakin's eyes lit up at the prospect. This was his chance to get involved, to use his skills and make a difference once more. Padme hesitated when Anakin offered his services as her protector. She understood his restlessness and the fire within him to contribute, but she also worried about the dangers he would face. Yet, she knew how capable he was, and his presence would be a significant reassurance to her. Are you sure, Anakin? I need to do this, Padme. I can't just stand by and watch anymore. I can help protect you and support the mission. It's what I should be doing. As they prepared for the mission, Anakin felt a spark of excitement and determination. This was his chance to prove that he could still make a difference, to show that his decision to leave the Order didn't mean he was abandoning the fight for peace and justice. The sun was beginning to set as Padme and Anakin arrived at the secluded meeting place on the remote, forested planet of Lumaria. The location had been carefully chosen for its supposed neutrality a rare sanctuary amidst the chaos of the Clone Wars. The dense trees and tranquil atmosphere offered a deceptive sense of peace as they made their way to the clearing, where the negotiations would take place. Padme's face was set in determined lines as she approached the Separatist Senator, a tall, stern-looking Twi'lek named Senator Vesk. He greeted them with a curt nod, his eyes flickering briefly to Anakin before settling back on Padme. Senator Amidala, it's good to see you. I hope we can find common ground today. Senator Vesk, I share your hope. The galaxy has suffered too much already. We must find a way to end this conflict and bring about peace. As the negotiations began, Anakin stood a few paces behind Padme, his senses alert and his hand never far from his lightsaber. The discussion was tense but civil, with both sides presenting their arguments and counterarguments. Hours passed, and the weight of the war seemed to hang over every word spoken. Despite their efforts, it became increasingly clear that the gap between them was too wide. The ideals and demands on both sides seemed insurmountable. Padme's frustration grew, but she remained composed, hoping for a breakthrough. Finally, Senator Vesk sighed, a look of genuine regret crossing his face. Senator Amidala. I truly wished it hadn't come to this. I had hoped for a peaceful resolution. Anakin's senses prickled with unease at Vesk's words, and he instinctively reached for his lightsaber. Before he could react, the shadows around the clearing seemed to come alive. From the darkness, the imposing figure of Count Dooku emerged, his presence sending a chill through the air. Indeed it is unfortunate, but the terms have changed. This planet is no longer neutral. The leaders of Lumaria have agreed to join the Confederacy. Anakin stepped forward, his lightsaber igniting with a snap hiss, casting a blue glow across the clearing. Dooku, you won't get away with this. Ah, young Skywalker, always so eager for a fight. But you are outnumbered and outmatched. Surrender now, and perhaps we can avoid unnecessary bloodshed. Padme's eyes darted around the clearing, Noting the emergence of battle droids from the shadows, their blasters trained on them. She reached for Anakin's arm, a plea for caution in her eyes. Anakin, we need to be careful. Anakin's grip tightened on his lightsaber, his mind racing. He knew they were in a precarious position, but retreat was not an option. We'll find a way out of this, Padme, I promise. Enough talk, seize them. The battle droids advanced, 
and Anakin sprang into action, his lightsaber a blur of blue light as he deflected blaster bolts and struck down the droids. Padme took cover, her blaster in hand, firing precise shots to support Anakin. The clearing erupted into chaos, the once peaceful negotiation site now a battlefield. Anakin's movements were a blend of grace and fury, his skills honed by years of training and combat. But the odds were against them, and the sheer number of droids seemed overwhelming. Dooku watched the struggle with a detached interest, his lightsaber still unlit. You cannot win, Skywalker. Surrender, and perhaps I will show mercy. As the battle droids fell one by one to Anakin's lightsaber, he turned to Padme, his face etched with determination. Padme, get back to the ship and call for help. I'll hold them off. Anakin turned his focus back to the fight, his lightsaber humming as he deflected blaster bolts and cut down more droids. Count Dooku, standing on the edge of the chaos, finally ignited his crimson lightsaber and strode forward with a confident smirk. It seems you've learned much since our last encounter, but tell me, have you learned enough? Anakin's blue blade clashed with Dooku's red one, the sound of their sabers locking echoing through the forest. Dooku's smile widened as he parried Anakin's aggressive blows with ease. Yes, use your emotions, young Skywalker. Remember how I took your hand. Let that anger give you strength. Anakin's eyes burned with fury, his strikes growing more powerful and frantic. He could feel the dark side's pull, the raw energy coursing through him, but his training was incomplete. Each surge of power seemed to come with a cost, and he found himself being pushed back despite the increased ferocity of his attacks. Anakin roared in frustration, swinging wildly at Dooku, who deftly sidestepped and countered with a powerful strike that sent Anakin sprawling. Pain shot through his body, but he forced himself to stand, refusing to give up. Meanwhile, Padme reached the ship and urgently transmitted a distress signal. Padme didn't waste a moment. She rushed back toward the clearing, her heart pounding with fear for Anakin. She arrived just in time to see him battling Dooku with everything he had, but the fight was brutal. Dooku seemed almost amused, his strikes calculated in teaching as much as they were deadly. You're letting your anger cloud your judgment, Skywalker. You have potential, but you lack control. Anakin gritted his teeth, his frustration mounting. He could feel the dark side's seductive promise of power, but it was slipping through his fingers. Each time he tapped into his anger, Dooku seemed to counter with ease. As if the Sith Lord was drawing him into a trap, Dooku's blade flicked out, scoring a shallow cut across Anakin's arm. Just then, a familiar voice called out from the edge of the clearing. Anakin! Padme stood there, her blaster in hand, eyes wide with determination. Anakin's heart lifted at the sight of her, but he knew he couldn't afford any distractions. Get back, Padme! Ah, the Senator. Perhaps she can serve as further motivation for you. Anakin's anger surged, and he attacked with renewed vigor, but Dooku's experience and control continued to give him the upper hand. It became clear that Dooku was prolonging the fight, almost as if he was training Anakin, pushing him to his limits without delivering a final blow. The forest echoed with the clash of lightsabers and the heavy breathing of the combatants. Anakin was tiring, his incomplete training and raw emotions making him vulnerable. As the duel between Anakin and Count Dooku raged on, the forest clearing crackled with the intensity of their lightsabers clashing. Anakin's anger surged with each strike, his emotions fueling his strength. Dooku's taunts and teachings seeped into his mind, urging him to embrace the dark side, and Anakin found himself drawing on this forbidden power more and more. Yes, Skywalker, feel the power of your hatred, let it guide you. Anakin's attacks grew fiercer, faster. His movements became a blur of blue light and raw energy. Dooku, skilled and experienced though he was, had underestimated the true potential of the Chosen One. The force of Anakin's blows became overwhelming, and Dooku found himself struggling to keep up. With a powerful swing, Anakin finally disarmed Dooku, slicing off both of the Sith Lord's hands. Dooku fell to his knees, a look of shock and pain contorting his features. Anakin stood over him, both his and Dooku's lightsabers ignited, their blades crossing at Dooku's neck. 
Anakin, stop! This isn't you! Anakin's eyes were wild with rage and revenge. He tightened his grip on the lightsabers, poised to deliver the fatal blow. He deserves this, Padme, for everything he's done. But before he could act, a familiar voice called out, clear and commanding. Anakin, stop! Obi-Wan Kenobi appeared at the edge of the clearing, his presence a calming force. Hearing Obi-Wan's voice, Anakin hesitated, his grip loosening slightly. In that moment of indecision, Dooku seized the opportunity. Summoning every ounce of his remaining strength, he unleashed a powerful wave of the Force. The blast radiated outwards, hitting Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Padme with a violent force. They were all thrown backward, crashing into the surrounding trees and rocks. Padme's head struck a jagged rock, and she collapsed to the ground unconscious. Padme! Anakin shouted, scrambling to her side. He cradled her in his arms, panic and fear gripping him as he checked for signs of life. Obi-Wan, dazed but conscious, pushed himself up, his eyes scanning the area for Dooku. But the Sith Lord was already retreating into the shadows, his escape swift and silent amidst the confusion. As the ship ascended from the now hostile planet of Lumaria, the urgency of the situation pressed heavily on Anakin. Padme lay unconscious in his arms, her breathing shallow but steady. He could feel her life force through the force, but she remained unresponsive. Padme, wake up! Please, wake up! Anakin shouted, his voice filled with desperation. But there was no response. Panic surged within him, quickly morphing into rage. Obi-Wan knelt beside him, his face etched with concern. Anakin, she's alive. We need to stay calm and get her to medical attention as quickly as possible. Anakin's eyes blazed with fury as he rounded on Obi-Wan. This is all your fault. If it weren't for you constantly holding me back, Dooku would be dead and Padme would be fine. Anakin, I was only trying to help. I don't need your help! With Padme cradled in his arms, Anakin stormed to the cockpit, carefully placing her in a seat before preparing the ship for immediate departure. His hands trembled with a mix of fear and anger as he navigated the controls. He glanced back at Obi-Wan, who stood silently, a look of deep regret on his face. As the ship sped away from Lumeria, Anakin's mind raced. The events of the day played over and over in his head. The duel with Dooku, the temptation of the dark side, and now Padme's life hanging in the balance. The anger and frustration boiled within him, but the sight of Padme's still form reminded him of what truly mattered.